been taking a play off the, the title of, of two of your books. Uh, is there disorder, is there vengeance allowed in a courtroom? Well, I think what has happened, dis- disorder, absolutely, not in a courtroom, but in the scenes behind the courtroom. Um, the, you know, the other side, and I'll say the other side by putting it this way, I work exclusively against large corporations. And I find that those large corporations have the ability, to, they, have, they have the ability, the financial ability, the uh, impact, the, the political impact, the affluence, the influence, to create an awful lot of chaos around a case. And they do that because if, you, if you're trying to get a case to trial and you're trying to make a presentation to a jury, the more chaos the other side can present, the more difficult it is to present a cogent story that a jury might react to. So you see a lot of that type of disorder. The vengeance, I think what ends up happening with lawyers a lot of times, especially lawyers who have prosecuted, and they've seen so many people get away with it, they, they do develop, I think, a sense of, uh, a sense of vengeance. And the, the sense is they, they see a system that doesn't work well, especially if you come from a prosecutor's background, as I have. When I see the Department of Justice, for example, uh, where $8 trillion is stolen from the American public, and we then have the president telling us, well, we're going we're gonna to do something about Wall Street, and then nothing happens. Not one of them go to prison. And you have a sense of vengeance that really, it's, it, it, it never really, it's a sense of anger and a sense of vengeance that you carry with you into a courtroom sometimes because you know a lot of, a lot of that justice depends on how good good you are. And it depends on what the story that you're able to tell. So, yeah, there is some element of vengeance. It certainly doesn't manifest itself as it, as it does in this book. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know any stories that have taken vengeance that far. But there's always that element of vengeance when you understand you're working in a justice system that sometimes is totally upside down, where uh, some thug on Wall Street can steal $8 trillion and not go to prison, but some character out on the street selling an ounce of marijuana can go to prison for three years. So there's problems with the justice system, and I, I explore that an awful lot in all of the books that I, that, that I write. Do you see yourself as Atticus Finch? I wish I could. Atticus Finch influenced me tremendously as an attorney, and it's influenced my, it's influenced my uh, life as an attorney. I think I've always... Uh, the thing that attracted me about Atticus Finch was his willingness to take on the the plight of the underdog. Um, it's it's so easy to come out of law school, John, and somebody says to you, "Well, look, I'm going to offer you a salary of a couple of hundred thousand dollars. Come out here to L.A., New York, Chicago, work for a big corporate defense firm, and you're going to make a lot of money." And at some point, you have to say, "What you know? What you're doing with your hands?" Does that line up with what you feel in your heart and know in your mind? And I think Atticus Finch did that. Atticus Finch was a small-town attorney who, by the way, was actually based on a composite of some real small-town attorneys up around Monroeville, Alabama. And I, I, I've always been impressed with that notion of how you should lawyer, how what you do in the courtroom should be how you live your life with your family, that it's not two, it's not two separate, you know, it's not two separate hats. It's a continuum. And what you do in your private life should have an impact on what you do as, a, uh, as an attorney. I think that had a big impact uh, on me when I you know, first discovered Atticus Finch to kill, to kill a Mockingbird. I actually wrote a book about it. It was... Um, it was called In Search of Atticus Finch. It was really more of a niche book for lawyers. It was, uh, you know, how to improve the quality of your life and still be a good lawyer. Uh, tell us about uh, uh, your desire and what a reader will take away when they close the last page of Law and Vengeance. Well, I, I think one thing I hope that they take away is that to, to ask more and question more. Um, and, and that means that, you know, we're sold something every day. We're sold this notion that, you know, corporate America is on our side, that if they made a new pill, the pill is going to be great, that if they tell us that if they're, they're, they're not going to pollute our waterway because they have some special process that won't pollute our waterway, and we find out that they do, we, we hear from the weapons industry that they do things above board. It, it's it's it, there's some element of cynicism to it, John, and the cynicism comes really from having firsthand experience and seeing it. And so I hope when somebody reads my books, whether it's Law and Disorder, with Law and Vengeance, or the next one, next two coming out, I hope that they understand that what I'm really trying to say is question more, 
ask more questions about what you believe is the acceptable norm, and I think you're going to be surprised.